I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and again, we appreciate you joining us. And, and we're in the second part, and, and as it turns out, we may end up with a third part. Who knows? But we're in, enjoying a, an interview and a, learning more about Sherry Philos, and we appreciate you coming all the way from Tennessee. So far, we've learned that you spent time in Guam, mm -hmm. and then you came back to Utah. You actually went to Hillcrest High School. Yes, Is that Hillcrest right? We kind of skipped over that. That's where my kids went. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a few years later, I guess. Uh huh. And then you ended up in Massachusetts. You did some nanny work yeah. and uh, yeah. met your to be husband, husband back yeah. there. Yep. Yeah. And uh, you mentioned that you've been a primary teacher and mm -hmm. a, a young women's president, mm -hmm. uh, primary president, young women's president. You taught early morning seminary. Yeah. You were a home care. You did home daycare. Uh, I did daycare. home daycare to stay home with my children when they were infants and toddlers. And, and your husband was at Berkeley? College of Music. College of Music. Yeah. And so you, my first husband. And you're a sing yes. And your husband, <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, your first husband. <laughs> right. And you are a singer. Yeah, I, I, and you've yes, actually I was. done music. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. We'll talk right about now, that we'll maybe keep it later. in the past tense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, oh, you were a singer. Okay. I was, yes. Anyway, so with all that, and again, early morning seminary teacher, mm -hmm. and did you learn any, were, were there any questions about Mormonism there in early morning seminary? That I, ever, the kids ever asked any questions that you thought, hmm, I guess I better check that out? No, I taught early morning seminary for, for one year, yeah. and it was the New Testament. Oh, how interesting. I loved it. Absolutely Did loved it. Did you learn it. much? I learned a lot. Uh, what did you feel about those lessons? I loved those lessons. But i got to back up just a little bit. Sure. The year before I taught early morning seminary was the last year that my husband and I had our band together. We had an original band. Well, yeah, band. I wanted to talk about that yeah. because after the seminary discussion, but you, you actually organized a band. Oh, yeah. We had we played around the Boston area for about seven years. He had a recording studio. What kind of venues would you play at? Uh, clubs. Yeah. What kind of music was it? It was original rock and roll. They called it back then alternative, college alternative. Oh. Uh, and we got a decent amount of college radio airplay. We oh, played at fun. Mama Kin, we played at uh, The Rat, Different Bun places Ratties. in Boston. Yeah, places that people from yeah. Boston would recognize. Cheers? No, you no, didn't no, play no, Cheers. No, 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 no. That's a fake, well. That's a fake band. They don't have bands at Cheers. At Cheers, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just, right? It's the only bar I know in Boston, but. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> supposedly, but. Right. Yeah. How was that? Was that fun? Your husband played? It was a tremendous amount of fun. Yeah, and you were guitar. I I, and I sang. wrote most of the music. Oh, you I did. I am not I don't claim to be a good musician. Yeah. I claim to enjoy writing and creating and then yeah. I hand off the music to the true musicians the who then do amazing things with it. Yeah. Yeah. And you've done a CD just to bring us. We, we've really done a current. few CDs. Oh, have yeah, you? we did okay. a few. Yeah, especially with the recording studio we could do that for And how would people free. find that if they were interested? Um it, it, we had Could a great time. Could they cook up Cherry Filos on the... Oh, you're, and by the way, your middle, maiden name is Mitchell. You wanted to right. mention that. Right, Cherry so. Mitchell Filos. Yeah. Yeah. So let's keep it pre-2000. Okay. We'll keep it pre-2000. All right. Um, the 
we we had the band from about 1991 to 1998. Okay. And within that time, I was also having children and being young woman's president and primary president. And then when I was pregnant with child number three, we decided, okay, maybe we need to not do this anymore because it was when, the, when the playing band. out all night yeah, and you know right. having. Uh, kids from the ward come babysit till two o'clock in the morning. Oh, take yeah. them home the next day. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. a bit much. So um, uh, we wound that down and okay. decided not to do that. I taught early morning seminary uh, for one year on the New Testament. Loved it. Felt like I learned a ton. And then one morning on the way home, well, back up about the dream. I I, I was having these dreams. They were the same dream. One was that I, w I was in front of my locker at school. Everyone around me knew where they were going. I didn't know where I was going. And the other dream was I was sitting in class. The book was open. I didn't know where I should be in the book, but everybody else around me knew where they should be in the book. And I'm saying, okay, Lord, you're trying to tell me something. So these were just dreams that you had over a a couple of days or something yes. and just think yes I don't know where I'm going what right I'm, doing? I'm thinking okay I'm supposed to be God's doing something yeah. yeah I'm supposed to be doing something so um, I prayed about it yeah. and I said Lord please let me know what I'm supposed to be doing yeah. and the one morning on the way home from seminary I was sitting at a stoplight and had this epiphany that uh, pretty much you know you've got to go back to school and you've got to go to law school and I'm thinking Ah, uh, sure. Get right on really? it. I was flabbergasted. I was amazed. Um, it seemed overwhelming. But I had, it was a strong impression. Oh, yeah. and just undeniable what you yeah. 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 And I thought, you know what? I am not done with my undergraduate degree. That's true. And I decided Oh, not, you'd put that on hold I for had, the kids yeah. and the band and everything. Right. Sure. So I went back to school at UMass Boston and graduated in 2002 in History. In history? Yep. Were you thinking you'd write or study, or did you think, well, this is a way to go to law school? I that knew point? that I was going to go to law school. I didn't know when, oh. but I, was, I knew that it, it also needed to be at a time when it wasn't going to hurt the children, right. as far as, you know, yeah, sure. my ability to care for them. Yeah. And uh, in, about in about 2003, my marriage really started falling apart, and I... And I knew that I had to do that. You know, things just kind of fall together when they're supposed to. If you're, you see God's hand in it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I knew that I had. So I always assumed that I would go to law school somewhere on the East Coast. Sure. We were living on the East Coast. Yeah. That seemed logical. But when I was preparing to take the LSAT, I looked at the list of um, law schools. And every single time I saw BYU, I got teary. And I'm thinking... No. <laughs> I, I had a bad attitude about BYU. I think that was my little rebellion. Well, you spent a semester at, U, at the U. <laughs> I, and, that's right. Yeah. I had gone to the University of Utah. My dad was the University of Utah fan. He graduated yeah. from the University of Utah. And I just really had kind of an attitude about BYU, BYU. because I had been inactive for seven years as a teenager. Yeah. And so BYU for me wasn't an option. So <laughs> I decided, okay, Lord, I'll, whatever you want, that's what I'm going to do. And I contacted BYU. I applied to BYU. I was accepted to BYU. My husband at the time said no. He doesn't want to leave he the said East no. Coast. Yeah. Actually, at the time, well, so I decided, all right, I'll go to one here. And so I completely oh, focused on really? going to one in Rhode Island. I was accepted to one in Rhode Island. They were going to give me a a scholarship which would knock the tuition down. Yeah. They have an, a study abroad component, blah, blah, blah. But they were a new law school and they weren't accredited quite yet, which wouldn't have been an issue. But And then the marriage really started going to pieces. And, and I, you felt maybe time to get away. And I thought, away. okay, Lord, I'm sorry. I'll do what you want me to do, even if it's oh, go to be white. Because <laughs> you felt that impression yes. so many times. Yes. Yeah. So at that time, now did you take the? Oh, I'm sorry. I contacted BYU again, yeah. and they said, "Well, we've accepted the, the, the people we're going to accept for this year, but you can be waitlisted." Oh. So they waitlisted me. I moved to Utah anyway, hung in Utah with the kids. Or with the kids, did they stay back? With the, no, I brought oh, the kids. Oh, you brought them back. Yep, and and, and you started working then that year. Or? Um, we divided up the property, and financially, I was doing okay. Okay. 
We had enough property. Which would allow you to go to school eventually. And, yep. And do, okay. yep. I bought a condo in Lehigh. Wow. And uh, started preparing to go to law school. At the yeah. time, it was just, you know what really helped me during that time? What's that? Listening to Christian rock. Really? Caleb. Caleb, yeah. 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 Because I was devastated. Yeah. I was absolutely devastated. Um, it was a very, very tough, tough time. Yeah, I want to ask you real quick, because again, I'm looking at notes and stuff, but you actually, was it back in Massachusetts that you write this, you write this research paper? Was that? Yes. Do you want to tell us that, about that? Yeah. Um, so in about 2001, I took a class on American religion. And this is in UMass Boston? At UMass Boston. Okay. And we were supposed, we were assigned to write a paper on... Some something about of, American religion. I thought, hey, Joseph Smith, no problem. Yeah. I'll help the professor know something <laughs> about Joseph Smith. Maybe convert him. Yes, <laughs> yeah. exactly. That's what I thought. So I wrote my paper and uh, used only resources to be found in the UMass Boston Library. Okay. And I discovered some unpleasant truths about Things the founding of the LDS Church. And particularly, and like I told you, with the book, No Man Knows My History. Von Bodie's book. Yeah. yeah. No you Man read. Knows My Story. Is it history, story, whatever. No so, Man Knows My History. History. history yeah. Um, I took some things from that book, but as we've talked about before, when you're a staunch believing member, you can only absorb so much. I could not absorb. And that's very little most generally, right? Yes. <laughs> I could only absorb so much because I just could not. Because it wasn't true? I um, mean, you said no, to yourself, this can't be true? Partially because of her unscholastic tone. She had a very snarky, uh, axe-grinding tone. Which it was obvious she hated Joseph Smith, right? <laughs> and I'm thinking, I can't believe someone like that. It's so unscholarly. Uh -huh. I did end up taking some I information wasn't that discerning. I from just her book, through it, but, uh, but I used a lot of other sources. What else? Uh, I think I used Michael Quinn's um, oh, Magic, The Magic, magic Worldview. World I yeah. used that one. There was a uh, a biography on David Whitmer, which I found fascinating. Oh, right. I can't even remember the name of it uh, at the at the time or at the moment. I'm trying to think of what else. But what impre what really upset me at the time was the situation with Sarah Pratt and Orson Pratt, because that, that I absorbed. They were married. They were married. Sarah Pratt was married to Orson Pratt. Orson Pratt was in England on a mission, <laughs> and Joseph Smith approached Approaches Sarah here. Pratt and says, hey, you want to be one of my spiritual wives? She says, no way, baby. One husband's enough for me. <laughs> and then he denied ever ask, to asking her that. And she was so upset about it. Did she write about it? Well, she told Orson as soon as Orson oh. got home. And I'm sure she told other people. Yeah. But it became like a little war between them, mm. Sarah Pratt and Joseph Smith. Yeah. And or some, I was just upset by that. That really upset me. That was the one thing I absorbed that really upset me about Joseph Smith. I didn't really get into the whole polyandry thing. I wrote the paper from the perspective of, yes, he was a man. He made mistakes. The church marched on. Did, is this when you read Emma's biography too? No, I read that Emma's. That was later. Okay. Yeah, I actually took pieces from Emma's biography, but I didn't read Emma's biography cover to cover. Hmm. I had small ch toddlers running around at home. <laughs> I had several classes, and I was juggling just as fast as I could. Yeah. I read Emma's biography later on, cover to cover. Oh, okay. Yeah. Fascinating. Yeah. So you learn things. You put them on but a shelf. Is that what you do? But my husband at the time read my paper and, and lost he was his member. testimony. He was a return missionary. No, he wasn't. Oh. Oh, okay. He was the convert, remember? Oh, okay. We got the, married okay, in November. He was okay. baptized in February. Right, okay, got him. And, and he'd been in a few bishoprics. So he reads your paper? He read my paper, lost his testimony. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Got yeah. an A-plus on that paper, I did, you? yeah. yeah. <laughs> I didn't lose my testimony. I still have But did you put that on a shelf, as we say? Kind um, of, uh, yeah, I just kind of set that aside yeah. and marched merrily on <laughs> for a while. Yeah. 
All right, so you spend, <coughs> okay, where are we at? You spend. So he loses his testimony. Okay. And again, the marriage falls apart. Yeah. I move to Utah, get okay. ready to go to law school. Go have, to law school, oh. marry husband number two. Okay, so you're in law school from 2005 to 2008. Eight. Right. Okay, and uh, anything significant happens? What, I mean, you, you're with law stu students and. and uh, um, Thinkers, critical thinking, I, did you? Have, yes, I yeah. learned how to think. Yeah. Love the professors, wonderful environment, and it was a blessing for me to be there oh, because good. it taught me how to think yeah. for a price that I wouldn't have to go into debt. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't have to continue paying off for the rest of my life. Um, met wonderful, wonderful people, uh, wrote many, many papers. Again, married husband number two. Were you learning anything more about the church? Did you sense the people around you, the professors and the students, all were strong in their faith and that I kind of thing? I think it was at the end of my law school career that I had made some other discoveries. And I can't remember specifically other than I just, it just started sticking in my craw about the difference in the treatment between the men and the women and the polygamy. Mm -hmm. and, and we might want to mention right now, I come from polygamy. My uh, grandmother is from the Barlow clan. She was oh. Arlene Barlow. Uh, they started polygamy after the manifesto. And my great-grandfather married three wives. Was that here in Utah? Yes, or here they, in Utah. They were in New Mexico or nope. any, anywhere? here in Utah. Okay and she escaped as a teenager hmm. and I think had been affected so negatively by the dynamics, uh, the power dynamics of polygamy. It affected my father who in turn it affected his marriage and his relationship wow. with his wife which was my mother yeah. which affected me. Sure. So I think the book The Ghost of Polygamy which I've heard a lot about, yeah. I haven't read it yet, but there, uh, that is so true. That is so true. There is a ghost of polygamy that affects and influences a lot of the policy decisions that are made today. Really? I think so, yeah. Um. But anyhow, so I wasn't so concerned with church. Oh, we could, we yeah. could talk about how uh, in law school I saw occasional signs up talking about the similarities between uh, announcing, uh, I don't know if it was a class or a seminar, on the similarities between Joseph Smith and Muhammad. And I was so offended by those posters. By well, those comparisons. Yes. And stuff, yeah. I'm thinking. And this was at BYU? Yes. BYU wow. Law School. They put those up? Yes. I'm oh. thinking, what are you guys trying to do? Cozy up to the Muslims in school? Are you trying to make them feel comfortable? <laughs> I just couldn't understand why they would do that. Yeah. But. Because um, that almost seems like a anti Mormon kind of a concept, isn't it? Where it, it seemed to me offensive. Why is this guy a prophet and why isn't this because guy I a knew, prophet? Because I knew Muhammad had done some very bad things. Yeah. How could they compare him to Joseph Smith? Right. Right? But he sees an angel and he writes a book and similar stories in some ways. In fact, Joseph Smith at some point said, I am the Muhammad uh. to the to the world or the yeah, church see, or I, something. See, I didn't, didn't know that didn't, at yeah, the time, no. I had no idea. No. It wasn't until later on when I read this book. And yeah, this show is about, that to everybody. It's, it's about uh, five... Seeking Allah, Finding Jesus. Three years before I actually left the church, I read this book and I noticed the similarities in teaching yeah. between the Muslims and Mormons. Because Very they say the same thing about the Bible. And, yeah. You can't trust the Bible. <laughs> it's been mistranslated. It's, uh, you just don't know where those books came from, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. So when I read that in this book from a devout Muslim who found Jesus yeah. and the way that he came to Jesus, it really resonated with me. So you're almost thinking, you know, maybe maybe I could make a change, maybe I need a change, or well, can I hold on to this religion? What were you thinking? I had, after law school, I went, I, I went back to Massachusetts, and I were, were missing, but that's okay. Went back to Massachusetts, <laughs> and... Uh, Is it, you do practice law back there? I did. Okay. Yeah. Uh, ran for city council. And won. Yeah. Um, passed the bar my second time. First yeah. time I was getting married, and 
wasn't a good time to be taking it. <laughs> Kids and everything else, yeah. Um, and then just practiced as a divorce attorney, of all things. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And continued my study of the LDS Church. That's at the time that I read Grant Palmer. Insider's View of Mormon Origins. Yes. Uh -huh. I read Conflict in the Quorum. Who wrote that? I... It's Signature Books okay. put it out. Okay. It talks about the historical conflicts that, the that are the documented 12. at the Quorum of the Twelve. And it answered a lot of my questions about Orson Pratt. Oh. Orson Pratt had been removed at, at as an apostle, or... as out of his place yeah. in the Twelve, for no reason given on the record. Okay, probably back to Sarah. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure it did. I mean, he was upset or something. Yeah. Right, and I also read Emma's biography. That's the when you whole read that. thing. Okay, and uh, that was very eye opening. I had a problem with what I was really focusing on at that time was the revelation where Joseph tells Emma that if she doesn't accept polygamy, she's going to be destroyed. Section 132. Which is still in yeah. the Doctrine and Covenants. And I thought, they need to take that out. I was ready to go on a public crusade to get, to get them to take that out. Yeah. Because it was obvious Emma wasn't destroyed. Within one year of that revelation, Joseph had been destroyed. Yeah, that says something, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. I don't think Mormons think about that yeah. at all. Yeah. And then I found a scripture in Deuteronomy that talks about when a prophet says something the Lord didn't tell him to say, how he would be destroyed. Yeah. And I'm thinking, okay, well, there you go, 132. <laughs> one year later. Yeah. <laughs> right. Interesting. So you're back, back practicing law in Massachusetts. You've got the family back there. You've not with this husband, but right. you, okay. I had remarried. I had been divorced twice, <laughs> Re, uh, remarried, husband number three. Uh, hus husband number two, we might mention, was staunch LDS, so I thought. And return missionary. And return That's missionary. return missionary, okay. Yep. And we won't go into those sorry no, details no, no, other no. than to say that But you I, thought you had some structure there and you had somebody that was going to help you live life as a Mormon. And, it's and what I the, wanted. Yeah. It's what I wanted. Right. Yeah. You just figure that. See, I think sometimes <laughs> ladies uh, looking for return missionaries think that's going to be an end-all answer, that they're going to provide love, nurture, and do all those things. There was a things. tremendous lack of honesty. And there, uh, and I just have a feeling that there's a lot of hypocrisy. So in after that, even with I specifically missionaries. looked outside the church because I figured I would find more honesty. Yeah. There wasn't much honesty for the single people in my age group okay. among the men. So how did you find... Uh, this next um, husband, this husband. Online. Yeah. Yeah. And I wasn't looking for a husband. I was looking for dating partners. Yeah. I mean, not dating partners. I was just a looking for a structure. social yeah. structure. Yeah. Uh, we, it, 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 there was no way to date long distance anyway, well, other than long distance, because he was on the East Coast. I was in Utah, and I was specifically talking to people that were not in Utah. You, before you practiced law in yes. Massachusetts? Oh, okay. Right. So we're back just after your BYU time or right. during at the end of that? It was at the end of my BYU time. Okay. Yep. And I was, like I said, projecting that I was on the East Coast because I was going to move back there. I, yeah, you that knew was the that you're plan, to, right? Yeah. And I didn't really want to date anyone right With then that. and there. Right. I, I figured, okay, it's safer to date yeah. online. You can get to know them. You can uh, look at their writing. You can, if you feel yeah. safe enough, you can right. actually meet them at some point. Yeah, and eventually he comes out here to Salt he Lake. Did. And you take him to? Temple Square. <laughs> For a religious <laughs> moment. Right. Now, he's a good Christian, and uh, would he's you say he's a... He's a Presbyterian. Yeah. He actually was agnostic until he went through his divorce, and it um, mm. moved him to look for God. You know, when people experience tragedy, it, it pushes Sometimes. them usually one of two ways. Yeah. They either come closer to God or further away, right? right? Well, and he reached for he God. For reach yeah. For yeah. It be God became very important to him. Uh. So he, in fact, he prayed to marry a good Christian woman. He got me. And he got a Mormon. <laughs> Now, where's your testimony at this time of the church? Are you still, you're um, active? Are you still going to, I, after BYU? You... I went to church faithfully. I was a faithful member. I was becoming more and more resentful 
at the treatment of women and the attitude towards women in the church, particularly divorced women. At the time, I was a divorced yeah. woman, and not just once, but twice. And you were saying um, to me earlier that you kind of resented the fact that here, in order for him to become a Mormon and you ended up marrying him in the temple, which of course did never happen, but you would have had to go to your first husband or get a temple divorce from Yes. And you didn't feel like that was... After practicing as a divorce attorney for a few years, I became very resentful that I would have to request patriarchal a temple <laughs> ceiling cancellation yeah. from my ex-husband yeah. who had lost his testimony. <laughs> it just made oh, no sense. It made absolutely no sense to me. And I was, I was becoming angry about it mm -hmm. because it seemed unfair. And again, I kind of had in the back of my mind that I could somehow change things. I could somehow yeah. make a difference. Make I kept bringing up Deborah. I kept saying, look, Deborah oh, was a prophet from the, from the Old Testament. Old Testament yeah. She was a prophet and she was a judge in Israel. She judged men. <laughs> Come on, people. Get, get a clue. Huh? <laughs> right. Well, you'd notice that now as an attorney type thing, you know, you're the judge and everything else. But, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So you became a little resentful to the priesthood, that kind of I thing. I did. Yeah. And when I came back to my old ward in Massachusetts, I felt the resentment because there were many people were in the ward mm -hmm. who blamed me for, for breaking up my first marriage because oh. I moved to Utah and went to law school. Oh. And and that was even brought up in Relief Society at one point oh, in boy. front of my daughter. <laughs> uh -oh. And uh, yeah, it was just really, wow. There's a lot of judgment. Yeah. So yeah. now you're active with this, your husband, uh, and he's now your husband still. Okay, so I get married in 2009 right. to my my husband, current husband, my current husband. Right. But you're still active in the church. Does he support you with that? He supports me. He was he going for a while. Once in a while. Yes. He was going for a while to his church and he had a, some fall, a falling out with the the way his church was going. And I said, "Honey, as long as you're going to a church that you don't believe in, you might as well come to my church." Okay. <laughs> so he came to the eldest. And so he started so. coming to church with me. Oh, okay. Yep. In fact, he became one of the more actively participating members of the Gospel Doctrine class. Did he ever say anything oh, that a lot. raised a lot of issues and stuff? Yes. He, he, he faithfully read the lesson beforehand and was prepared, mm. which is unusual. No, it is unusual. Yes. Well, we're out of time again, so I'm glad we're going to do <laughs> another one and finish up this wonderful story. Um, Talk about uh, what Jesus has meant to Sherry and, and uh, what he's done in her life. So we'll see you next time. Thanks. Mm -hmm.